This is my friend Matt Denton, and amongst all the awesome things that he does, he built a Lego-inspired go-kart in his YouTube channel. So much. I even 3D printed some parts for it with my not-so-big-anymore 3D printer, so he could make long beams without having to glue two parts together, so he could make the go-kart longer. Here are the ones that Ivan has built for me. Go and check it out, you will not regret it. And last spring at Maker Central I had an opportunity to try it out. And I loved it, so one night while having dinner I told Matt that I wanted to race him, but he made quite an observation. I don't have a Lego inspired go-kart, so I will have to make one. This is a Lego Technic beam, and the reasonable thing would have been to scale this up and this, 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 and this. But I'm not a reasonable person. So I went to my computer, started Fusion 360, and came up with this. Which is a one-third scale version of this. And you may be saying, Ivan, that's in the end a Lego Technic block. Not quite. Lego Technic blocks, or beams, or whatever, are joined using this kind of beams, or I should have done more research. And for the Miranda blocks, I will be using this. which are fastened with the Milan driver. Of course, this wasn't the first thing that I tried. I tried many things. This one, for example, is huge. It's not practical. It's too big. I know it's weird here from... This one is too wide. This one has the wrong pitch. And if you are wondering how can I afford to print all of these, all these tests and all these huge parts, it's because Polymaker is the official sponsor of my madness. So go and send them some love. And finally, I settled with this one. This is 84 millimeters wide and 84 millimeters tall, so it is square, and the distance between the holes is 84 millimeters. So you could say that this is 84 millimeter pitch. The offset between the top holes and the side holes is 42 millimeters, half pitch. And this is a half pitch screw, three quarters, full pitch, pitch and a quarter, twice the pitch, and all of these are fastened using these nuts. These have two small notches here and here, that interface with two holes in here. So when you get the nut in the hole, you just have to push and it stays there. And the nuts also have these two tabs in here so they don't spin. So you can just flip it upside down and fasten the screw even if you cannot reach the nut. If the pitch is 84 millimeters, what's the point of these odd sizes of screws? That's because we also have half-pitch height Miranda blocks, like the ones in LEGO Technic, and also quarter-pitch Miranda blocks. And of course, these all come in different lengths. Somehow I forgot to print a three-hole one. This one, by the way, is the only big part that I've been able to get from this printer in here. If you haven't watched the videos, click right here. I've had quite a few issues with the big printers trying to print all those big parts, because amongst other things, in the big printer I was needing almost 4.5 meters on each of the two Corex Y loops, meaning that I could only find steel core belts for that job. Also, you wouldn't want anything else because at these lengths, non-steel core belts are like springs. But I was using these super tight 10 teeth pulleys, and the bend diameter is tiny. Steel core belts don't like tiny bend radius, now I know. So the steel cores on the belts kept breaking. Those are just tiny, tiny steel wires and those don't like to be bent over and over, they, they break. So it was a Friday, I was tired, I installed new belts and printed larger pulleys in resin. Huge mistake! Luckily I checked the cameras before going to bed, saw that the printer was failing, came back running to the shop, stopped the printer and was able to more or less fix it. But that one in there, that one made quite a mess. I still don't know what caused the failure, when I came here on Friday, that one was going great, and when I came back on Monday, this was coming out of the hotel. Great Monday. The thermistor wire was broken, so I had to connect the heaters on the hotel to a power supply to heat it from the inside and free the hotel from the beast. I cleaned it up and replaced all the printed parts on the carriage, and now it's working. But yeah. Those things happen to me too. What should I do with this? It's heavy, it's solid. Oh yeah, the features of the Miranda blocks. 
These holes in here accept these bearings for when we need to make something move smoothly or fast and the holes also accept all these different kind of spacers. And talking about spacers, a quick ad from today's video sponsor, Stablish Titles from me, Lord Spacer. Stablish Titles is a fun and interesting way of preserving the woodlands of Scotland while helping the global reforestation efforts. Stablish Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners were referred to as lairds, lords or ladies in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland and an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. They plant a tree with every order and work with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. It makes a great last minute gift and they even have packs for couples where your plots of land are together. I could officially change my name to Lord Spacer on my credit card, my driver's license. The first 200 people that get a pack using my link will be next to the plot of I, Lord Spacer. Depending on how many of you want to become a lord of a lady, we can build our little Miranda kingdom. Established Titles is actually running an early Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code Miranda, you get an additional 10% off. Go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Miranda to get your gifts and at the same time help this channel. And now let me show you some more parts. And I'm already designing new blocks like this full pitch hinge and half pitch hinge or this rack and pinion. In fact, the camera is now on a Miranda block tripod. But I think all of this is going to be easier to understand if we start building the go-kart. So let's get to it. This is the wheel shaft that was printed in this orientation. And we need to attach this part in here so it doesn't rotate. I have these spacers in here. But with this, obviously, this would not work. That's why I have these interlocking spacers with the tabs that cannot rotate. So if I put this in here, it gets completely locked. Now we need a bearing in here and a bearing on the other side. Some nuts. This wheel shaft will rotate in this hole and for that we are going to use this other spacer in here where you can exactly fit one of these bearings like the one in the bottom like so same on the other side and i'm using these spacers in here to interlock when you join two parts together As you can see here and here, these bearing spacers not only add this flange for the bearings, but also add two millimeters of space here and here so this can rotate freely. Now I'm going to add this rack Miranda block to join the two steering arms together. And for now, we are going to go with straight steering, meaning that the steering radius of the four wheels will be the same. It's not optimal, but I think I can change the geometry in the future and trying to do some Ackerman steering with different radiuses but we need to get there. Let's go step by step. Now that the rack is installed, we need to add the pinion somewhere around here with a shaft connected to the steering wheel, supported by something. So I will continue expanding the chassis to add that something. This is the first part that I printed with the new belts and the new pulleys on the new big printer. 
and it came out great. It, it weighs more than half a kilo, it's basically solid, and it's the new shaft for our steering assembly. Let's see if I can remember the order. As always. <laughs> I think this one should be one whole bike. Now I need to adjust the position of the pinion on the shaft so there is no slack. I need these two blocks in here just to compensate for the different height between the front and the back. So I will add this, so it is easier to work on it. How cool is that? It works perfectly so smooth. I'm gonna win, Matt. I'm gonna win. And the best part is that it's a construction set. The discarded parts of this project can be used for another project. Please leave in the comments what would you like me see build in this channel with this. And I'm thinking about releasing a scaled down version of these parts because who knows, you could build something at home and then send me a picture and you could build it in here. And that's it for this video. Don't forget to check Matt's channel link on the description because you will not regret it. And subscribe because you won't want to miss the next episode of this build. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons and members. Thank you. And now please go and make something!